is because of the wrong literacy, biblical literacy, in our congregation. Guess what? How many, how many here are preachers? Okay, let me let you in on a little secret. There was a time when you could get away with saying just about anything you want to say. Because you were the most studied student of the Bible in the congregation. And because you knew so much more than what they knew, then they accepted what you said without challenge. But can I talk up in here today? Those days are gone. And you think you can just get up with a hoop, I want a stick and a kick. That's right. The, the congregation is far more literate as it refers to the Bible than they've ever been before. And guess what? They know how to Google just like you do. So, so those brilliant illustrations that you close your sermon with, they know where they are. <laughs> and so there is this expanding, watch where I'm going now, there is this expanding literacy of the congregation. And because of that, it's important that you really understand where the Bible came from. Because a lot of things that you used to be able to get away with, you're not going to be able to get away with in the future. And people watch this, and I'm not trying to intimidate anybody, but people are going to expect more because they know more. Right? Mm -hmm. right. You can't leave people from behind. That's right. Woo! So if, if you're here, and the congregation is here, mm -hmm. and the congregation grows to here, mm -hmm. and you remain here, mm -hmm. you ain't their leader. That's the the only way you <laughs> remain their leader is if you stand in yes. front of where they are. Yes. Yes. If I talk to my So there is a need for you to sharpen your craft. Yes. Yes. Wow. Because because the boats in the harbor are rising. Mm -hmm. And if those boats rise, then you have to rise with the boats to remain out in front. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you end up bringing up the rear and you're no longer the leader, you now become the follower. I know that's right. <laughs> Am I helping anybody? Yeah. And that's because of growing biblical literacy. Num 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 number, number two, and I'm gonna get this about in just a second, but, but number two, because this is important, I grew up thinking that God spoke in old English. <laughs> Do us, thou, dust. You know, I mean, all of that archaic old English language. Yeah. And I also grew up thinking that any version of the Bible other than the King James Version, <laughs> somebody listen with my religion. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Now, now listen, you, listen, you know that there was a time, and it wasn't that long ago, when somebody started reading from the New Living Translation, or even the New American Standard Version, your people would turn around, that ain't Bible, no, that ain't what my Bible said. My Bible said, the Lord is my shepherd. You know those seven things? Let me help you, saints. Let me help you. There are, there's a period more and more translations, and the usage of more translations in the life of the church than ever before. Mm -hmm. The Bible, and you have to know with it, so that you can explain the variances in the, because guess what? If you read from King James Version, and then you read from a Revised Standard Version, and then you read from a New Living Translation, those three translations can say three totally different things. Yes. Wow. And you have people looking at you saying, this says this over here, this says this over here, this says this over here. Now, pastor. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Woo. Okay. And then the third thing is that where, where there is an absence of information, there is an opportunity for abuse. Mm. Please put that down. Please put that down. Yeah. Wow. Where there is an access <laughs> of information, there is an opportunity for abuse. Here's what I'm trying to say. That if you don't tell your folk some basic fundamental rudimentary things, critics and cynics will take that same information 
and use that information against your people. Mm -hmm. Come on. I want you to put this term down. And I don't, I'm going to spell it out for you because I don't have a blackboard. But the term is inquisitor nator. I N Q U I S I T O R. Inquisitor. I N Q U I S I T O R. Inquisitor nator. N A T O R. Inquisitor. Inquisition. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. And Jesus told me, it literally means a defender of the faith. All right. You are called to be defenders mm, of the faith. Thank yeah. you. And oftentimes our silence gives consent. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, because we do not alert our people to certain aspects of biblical information, when they discover those things on their own. They look at you with suspect and assume you've been hiding stuff from me. Woo! Y'all know this, somebody? Over there in Psalms, it says, and he shall direct thy path. Mm -hmm. no, that ain't what the original writer said. The original writer said, Yahshua. Yeah, sure. All right. Oh, why did you show me? You see, see, first of all, when we read that, we misread it. Because when we read that he shall direct that path, we, we assume that God is directing us. That ain't what it said. It doesn't say he shall direct you. He says he shall direct your path. Not you. God ain't telling you where to go. God ain't telling you what to do. God, the word Yahshua, is an oriental word. That means that when the king came down the street, a servant of the king would get out in front of the king. And when the servant saw which road the king was going to travel, he would go down that road in advance of the king, move out all the rocks, all the stuff in the rocks, all the rocks, all the stairs, anything that might get in the king's way. Now, the king made the choice of what road he was going to travel, but the Yahshua made sure that whatever road he was going to travel, did not have an equivalent word for the original manuscript. So the, the translator inserted a word. That's right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. That would help his audience understand right. what the text was talking about. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on here, somebody. Can, can I show you something? Can I show you something? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go to the Let's go. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible talks about there being an edge. And God will pull a hedge around you. Well, in my language, I might, I might, I might not have the equivalent word for hedge. I may say, to, I may say to my audience that God will encircle you with some red tails. Oh my God! The movie. Oh, y'all Said, or am I giving you the thought behind the text? Yeah. 